Hi, I'm Kevin Anderson. I'm a graduate student at the University of Minnesota in the Applied Plant Sciences Department. I work with Drs. Don Wise and Greg Johnson. As part of the Forever Green initiative, our group was working towards innovative, sustainable agriculture that builds our local economy and protects our environment. We're doing this by creating continuous living cover on the landscape, which combats weeds and provides farmers with additional income. I'd like to share with you a little bit about our research and why it's important to Minnesota. What a cover crop is, is a means of providing continuous living cover on the landscape between fall harvest and spring planting. This cover is able to scavenge some nutrients from the previous crop. It provides ecosystem services, reduces erosion, and in this case is able to suppress weeds. The crop I'm working with is field pennycress, which is a fall seeded annual. That means that it's planted in the fall, grows the little rosette that you see in the upper right corner, that goes dormant over winter, and then takes off growing in the spring and gets a head start on spring emerging weeds. It develops a nice thick canopy which is able to suppress weeds as you see in the understory here, almost no weeds. In addition to that, pennycrest seeds contain up to 40% oil which is suitable to make biodiesel out of. This provides farmers with an additional income incentive to use cover crops. On top of that, Pennycrest flowers early in the spring and provides a food resource for pollinators and for beneficial insects. This can be a food resource for honeybees, which we have a lot of colonies overwintering in Minnesota. And also, like you see here, natural predator species like this hoverfly, which is a predator of aphids. And aphids are a pest on soybeans. So this can reduce the rates of pesticide usage on top of the other benefits. These are my research plots in Rosemount. My particular research is trying to answer several questions in relation to using pennycrest as a cover crop. The first and main question is what is the mechanism for weed suppression? So we know that pennycress works for suppressing weeds, and in order to make it work better, we need to understand why. This could be as simple as competition for water and nutrients, it could be competition for light, or it could be more complex chemical or soil interaction between plants. A second line of research will be looking at the impact of pennycress on soil fertility. So whether or not it's adding nutrients to the soil or improving water retention, or possibly taking some nutrients out that need to be replaced for the following crop. A third part of my research will be looking at the integration of pennycress into crop rotations common in the upper Midwest, namely corn and beans. In order for pennycress to grow well, it needs to be planted in late August before corn is harvested. So we're looking at ways to plant pennycress into standing corn crops. We're also looking at ways to harvest pennycress early enough so that soybeans can be planted and get the maximum yield from that crop. A fourth part of my research is trying to quantify the value of the ecosystem services provided by pennycress. So what is it really worth to have food provided for honeybees and for predaceous insects? I'm excited about pennycress because I think the economic benefit of planting it is going to drive farmer adoption and then provide a lot of ecosystem services to the Minnesota landscape. Thanks for watching and for letting me share my research with you. Here at the University of Minnesota, we're excited to be part of developing innovation in agriculture to advance our economy while protecting our environment. To find out more about our research, go to the website you see before you.